In today's video, we're taking on a hilarious yet brutally real challenge. Can a tiny $50 mini PC actually stand up to modern gaming? This poor little machine wasn't built for greatness, but we're about to push it way past its comfort zone. We're swapping in a faster CPU, slapping on external GPU like the RTX 2060 Super, and the monster RX 9060 XT through an M.2 NVMe riser, and then throwing it straight into the battlefield of popular titles like Minecraft, GTA 5, and CS2, plus a few graphically insane modern games just to see how quickly it begs for mercy. Will this pocket-sized PC rise to the occasion or crumble under the sheer horsepower of high-end GPU? Stick around because the results might surprise you. This is the ultimate showdown, $50 underdog versus full-blown enthusiast-level hardware. And trust me, you don't want to miss a single frame of chaos. This right here is the Dell Optiplex 3060 Micro. It measures just 18.2 by 17.6 by 3.6 centimeters and weighs around one kilogram, literally lighter and smaller than most of the GPUs I have on my desk. You probably already know what that means. This thing was never designed for heavy workloads. It was built for simple tasks, browsing the web, watching YouTube, maybe running a few office apps. So, of course, it's going to have some limitations when it comes to gaming. You can grab one of these for around $50 on eBay, which is honestly pretty cheap. Inside, it comes with an Intel i3-8100, 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU with a base clock of 3.6 GHz and 6 MB of cache. It's definitely on the modest side today. No hyper-threading, which puts it far behind modern 6- or 8-core CPU, especially if you're doing heavy workloads, multitasking, video editing, or anything serious. It also only comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is a huge limitation today. In a game like CS2, the system barely manages around 20 FPS, and the experience is extremely choppy. With just 8 gigabytes, the memory fills up almost instantly, and you start seeing the classic not responding pop-ups everywhere. It performs a bit better in lighter games like League of Legends, where it can hit around 40 frames per second. Not super smooth, but at least stable enough to finish a match without losing your mind. But honestly, that still isn't satisfying for me. And that means it's time to upgrade this tiny machine with some ultimate weapons. But hold on, we're not here to play games on Intel UHD 630. So let's crack this thing open. The teardown is actually super easy. I didn't even have to fight it. The cooling system is as simple as it gets. Just a small heat sink sitting directly on top of the CPU, cooled by a tiny blower style fan. This setup is only meant to handle around 55 watts, so it's definitely not built for anything crazy. Now for the first ultimate weapon, an RTX 2060 Super with 8 gigabytes of RAM. This is the factory overclocked version so it performs about 10-15% to 15 faster than the regular 2060. Kind of overkill for a tiny office PC in it, which is exactly why it's perfect. To actually use this GPU, we need an M.2 NVMe to PCIe X16 adapter, since the system doesn't have a real GPU slot. But the downside is that the adapter only uses four PCIe lanes, X4, so the GPU will definitely lose some performance. But hey, that's what we're here to find out. So let's test the real performance of this setup across a few games. First up is CS2, and I honestly couldn't believe my eyes. This tiny little machine was hitting around 80 FPS at 2K resolution on very high settings. That's crazy for a $50 office PC. Of course, the GPU is doing most of the heavy lifting, but the CPU is actually keeping things stable from start to finish, which is impressive on its own. But the big question is, can we break past 100 FPS? Dropping the resolution to 1080p bumped the frame rate up by about 10 to 20 FPS, and sometimes it even touched the 100 FPS mark. But it can't stay there consistently. That 4-core, four 4-thread four i3 is bottlenecking really hard. Still, compared to the original performance, where it could barely hit 15 FPS and the game felt like a slideshow, this upgrade is a massive improvement. Next up is Minecraft, running at 2K resolution on the highest settings. The game only managed to stay around 25 FPS on average, and there were some pretty heavy drops whenever I moved quickly or changed scenes. The GPU clearly still had plenty of power left, so the bottleneck was definitely somewhere else. So I decided to turn on a shader pack, and surprisingly the FPS actually went up a little. The visuals looked smoother, the lighting was cleaner, and the frame drops weren't nearly as bad. But even then, it still wasn't the experience I was hoping for. 
so yeah. It's clear I need to find a different approach if I want this tiny PC to give a truly playable Minecraft experience. Next, I'm swapping out that weak little CPU for an i5-8-4000, a 6-core, six 6-thread six processor that can turbo up to 4 GHz. It's roughly 50% faster than the i3-8-1000, and while it's not the strongest chip available for the socket, it should massively reduce the bottleneck we've been seeing. The best part? This CPU doesn't consume much power at all, so I can run it comfortably on the tiny power supply this system uses. Back to CS2. The FPS now sits around 80, which isn't a huge jump compared to before the CPU upgrade. But overall, the average frame rate did go up by about 10 FPS, and more importantly, the gameplay feels a lot more stable. The stutters are reduced, the pacing is smoother, and the whole experience is noticeably easier to play. So while it's not a dramatic boost, the i5 definitely helped clean things up. We also saw a pretty big improvement in Minecraft. The average FPS practically doubled, and even though the CPU is still bottlenecking, the overall gameplay became way smoother. Frame drops were noticeably reduced, and the game felt much more stable. With shaders on, there were still occasional dips, but nothing severe enough to ruin the experience. When I lowered the resolution to 1080p, set render distance to 8 chunks, and switched graphics to fast, the FPS shot past 500 frames per second. At that point, the CPU load dropped and the whole system finally felt like it was breathing normally. But it feels like there's still one more thing waiting to be upgraded. The RAM. Right now, we're still stuck at a pretty low capacity, and in theory, jumping to 16 gigabytes can boost gaming performance by 15 to 20%, depending on the title. So yeah, it's finally time to see how much of a difference this upgrade actually makes. Let's find out if more RAM can push this tiny PC even further. The stability improved immediately once I upgraded the RAM. The average FPS jumped all the way up to 95, and the random frame drops completely disappeared, even during intense fights. That also means way less input lag, making the whole experience feel smoother and much more responsive. This pretty much proves one thing. 16 gigabytes is the absolute minimum you should have if you want to play modern games today. Anything less and you're basically fighting your PC instead of playing the game. And I'm about to disrespect this poor CPU even more by pairing this tiny mini PC with a GPU that costs 10 times more than the entire system. Yep, we're going all the way with the RX 9060 XT, 16 gigabytes. Let's see how well this little machine can hold up, or at least try to, when connected to a monster like that. Of course, a GPU this powerful needs its own external power supply, so I'll be running it with a separate PSU, just to keep things from exploding. Time to find out if this mini PC can survive this level of upgrade. I honestly couldn't believe how smooth it felt. The FPS only went up a little on paper, but the responsiveness of the game was on a completely different level. Almost no input delay at all. The average FPS climbed to around 90, and the 1% lows improved dramatically. The GPU is clearly carrying a lot of the workload now, so the CPU is no longer stuck at 100% usage. Moving over to Minecraft, without shaders, the CPU is still doing most of the heavy lifting. FPS sits around 50, and you can definitely feel occasional stutters because the CPU is hitting its limits. Once I lowered the render distance to 8 chunks, things got much smoother. The CPU finally relaxed a bit, and the FPS sometimes shot all the way up to 700 FPS, which is hilarious on a system this small. Then, of course, I had to stress it with a TNT explosion. And yeah, it dropped straight to 0 FPS. But hey, the PC didn't crash, so I'll take that as a win. Next time, I promise I'll be gentler with it. With shaders enabled, the GPU finally gets a chance to shine. Utilization jumps close to 100%, delivering around 150 FPS, and the visuals look absolutely stunning. But let's be honest, no one buys an RX 9060 XT just to play Minecraft. So let's move on to another classic, GTA 5. At 2K resolution on very high settings, the system delivers around 70 to 80 FPS in GTA 5. You'll see a few drops during complex scenes or big explosions, but overall it's definitely playable and surprisingly smooth for this setup. If you want an even cleaner experience, you can always drop the resolution to 1080p, which gives you noticeably better stability and higher FPS. And that's the performance after upgrading this tiny mini PC. If you enjoyed this little experiment, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out. And we've got plenty more crazy builds coming up.